A great location is key when staying in Singapore, and that's where the Voco excels. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point, narrated video tours about hotels and flights all over the world. This is my 90th video and today we're at the Voco Orchard in Singapore. I hope you'll stay tuned and allow me to show you around. I think it's pretty safe to say, if you know anything about Singapore, you know something about Orchard Road, one of the best shopping streets in the city. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid, as well as my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. Orchard Road got its name from its origins of literally being the road that led to the fruit, nutmeg, and pepper orchards on the island in the mid-19th century. Today's hotel, the Voco Orchard, was previously a Hilton property and reopened its 423 rooms after a renovation in early 2022. IHG, the parent company of Voco and Intercontinental, opened the first Voco in 2018, describing them as, quote, unstuffy hotels where people feel comfortable to relax and just get on with relaxing. With the whole flip-flops and all, I appreciate that unstuffy nod. There are currently 35 Vocos open, with 36 more in the pipeline. What else is in the pipeline, you ask? A whole lot more content. Three new videos each week, to be precise. So whether you're researching a hotel, dreaming about your next trip, or you just started watching some cat videos and somehow got caught in a YouTube wormhole, I'd like to ask you to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on any of the videos to come. The subscription is completely free for you, and really supports the channel. If you're not a fan of free things though, there is also my new Patreon, which will be linked in the description below. Also, if you have any suggestions or comments, I'm always all ears. Thank you in advance for any and all of your support. Before we tour the lobby, let's take a quick look at exactly where we are. Orchard Road is in the core central region of the city-state, and is more or less flanked to the north and south by Little India and Chinatown respectively. The streets itself are lined with trees from end to end, with really wide, beautiful sidewalks that have been smoke-free since 2018. Busy as shopping thoroughfare as it is though, there really aren't that many hotels directly on it. My quick count of 4 and 5 star properties only got up to 9, which is the answer to your question, why is he going on so much about the location? The business-oriented lobby is fuss-free and gives a good, fresh first impression. Overall, I think the renovation was quite successful, and is exactly the kind of renovation that I think the Hilton Copacabana needs, for any of you that caught my reviews from Rio. Check-in was seamless just a couple of minutes before I was guided to my room with my welcome treat, a spiced cookie from the in-house cakery, D9, in hand. Before we head up there though, let's check out some of the venues. Behind D9 is Opus Bar & Grill, the all-day dining venue and where you'd be able to have breakfast from their decent buffet. The restaurant is deceptively large, just looking like a small lounge from out in the lobby. Breakfast wasn't included in my room rate, but I added it on for $31 Sing dollars, which I felt was just borderline a little bit too much. The buffet opens at 6.30 on the dot daily, and it's a good thing, because the crowd here is really early. I'm talking like a good 50 guests sat down in the first 15 minutes of opening. The buffet had all of the basics, with Singaporean, Chinese, Indian, and Western options. But with so many cuisines and such a small space, it's hard to really say that it was all that special, but it did hit the spot. If breakfast is included in your room rate, you can also opt for a grab-and-go option. During my stay, there seemed to be a lot of construction logistics workers staying at the hotel, so this breakfast option was very popular. Also in the lobby, a few small shops, just in case you forgot your Rolex at home. Now, let's head up to the rooftop. 
Originally, I planned to have a late lunch at their restaurant just to the left, Il Cielo. But even at 3pm, the venue was still full and, if I'm honest, was little more than a small square room with a handful of tables in it. Regardless of the food, probably not a place that I'd actually see myself dining at. Also, behind me in the corridor is a small fitness center. The pool area was clean, but very basic. Up here, plus the guest room bathrooms, are perhaps the areas that receive the short end of the stick during renovation. On a rooftop like this, the difference between a barren space and a lush tropical rooftop is honestly just a bunch of really well-placed potted plants, and perhaps some loungers with a bit more personality. I'm surprised a little more investment wasn't put into the space up here. Regardless though, there are some beautiful views of the city to be had, if that's your thing. Alright, time to head to the room. Tonight I'm on the 11th floor. The corridors are mostly original but still felt fresh and it's honestly one of the cleanest smelling hotels I think I've ever been in. Not chemically or perfumed, just, I don't know, actually clean? And inside, we also found a spotless room. For the price, I think it's a great room, and very comfortable whether you're here for a night, a week, or for work or holiday. Rooms come standard with well-placed outlets, a table and chair, and a large all-glass desk and workstation. Hopefully that glass will resist scratches over time. If it does, it's a great choice to give the room a really open feel. The bedding and mattress were also really comfortable with a nice and strong AC. Plenty of storage space with a designated spot to put your bags and a full-size wardrobe next to the mini bar area. For the hotel's price point, I wouldn't really expect any real coffee machine. So the pour over coffee sachets and the TWG teas were a really nice surprise. Oh, and the Biscoff cookies. Why don't more hotels do this? That little tiny cookie that costs just a few pennies, it goes a long way. The mini bar didn't have chargeable items, but came with a few bottles of complimentary water and coffee creamers. The wardrobe itself was small but functional, which leads us to the bathroom. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the bathroom from a cleanliness or functionality perspective, but the built-in bathtub and the sink vanities do give away the hotel's age a bit, but not a big problem like I've read in some of the reviews that focus way too much on that black granite counter. Products in the room were in semi-tamper-proof bulk containers featuring really nice Brooklyn-based Apotheque products. Last up, we have the view from the room. Being in the back of the hotel, not the greatest view in the world, but still a nice bit of greenery to frame out the space. So what do we think? The Voco Orchard is a no-nonsense, comfortable, and value-oriented property directly on Orchard, and is a property that I'd happily visit again if the price was right. Now onto the flip-flop score. Please feel free to pause to take a closer look. I really hope you enjoyed the video today and hope you'll subscribe for much, much more content to come. I'd love to see you back here on Sunday for my Japan Airlines business class trip report from Tokyo Haneda to New York's JFK.